Martin County Dream, Jeremy Rhodes. Now, you guys thought I was going to say the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. I think our guest here today could take the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, in a wrestling match. So, Jeremy, man, thank you for joining us. Um, of course, you're a two-time state champion, 1996, 1997, from Sheldon Clark High School. For those of you that are not familiar, uh, Sheldon Clark kind of moved about a mile up the road, changed the name of the school, got a new building. They're now Martin County High School. But that Sheldon Clark tradition runs deep, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And like we said, two-time state champion, 96 and 97. So standard question we like to start everybody off with is, how does Jeremy Rhodes find wrestling? What gets you into it, man? Uh, I had two older brothers. My dad wrestled in high school, actually, at Ripley High School. Back in the uh, early 70s, I, he, his wrestling team, the wrestling coach had never wrestled before. They literally were learning out of, out of the rules book how to wrestle. So dad was a pretty good wrestler. I was, I think, four or five years old when I first started wrestling. Uh, I had two older brothers that were wrestling also. We wrestled in a youth program at Ripley, West Virginia, then ended up um, eventually wrestling for the Parkersburg Cougars up in, in Parkersburg, West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a it was, a, it was a, almost like an all-star team per se, and it's still kind of that way now. There's there's kids from we're about a half, I, I live about a half hour away from Parkersburg, and there's kids from our county that that travel down just to wrestle at, with Parkersburg Cougars because you know it's it's it is kind of like a, an all-star team. They don't wrestle in any local leagues. They uh, when 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 they travel, at least back when we traveled years ago, there were 50, 60 kids that were going, and they they. They thought it was it was like legit an all star team. I mean, we had kids driving sometimes an hour from an hour hour and a half away to get to practice three nights a week. So it was it was a pretty uh, unique unique wrestling team. Yeah, and Parkersburg is just a a little bit north of Inez. I mean, just a little bit. Uh, a little bit. So of course you end up at at Sheldon Clark and refresh our memory. We know you were uh we were you were there in the ninety five year. Was you there for the ninety four year as well? Ninety four I was at Ripley, uh wrestling okay. my friend had, had dislocated my shoulder that year, didn't do so well at state tournament, um, ended up injury defaulting out. Um my dad was working for um uh, the company he's working for, he got transferred down to um uh, Logan and Mingo County. Mm -hmm. At the time wrestling teams at all in Mingo County or Logan. Logan actually still had a wrestling match. They they were invited us to come over and start a team. Mm -hmm. um, then Martin County was right across the right across the river from Mingo County. So uh, we went over, actually visited the school, and um, uh, we were happy to happy to find that place. And I think they were happy that we found them also. That's what I was gonna say. I bet Jim Matney was having parades down the middle of uh, Inez when you boys showed up, right? It wasn't quite that bad, I don't think. No, I, I'm I'm kidding. I'm I'm kidding. But um, of course, in '96, I believe your cousin uh, joined you, correct? Yeah, Scott Rhodes. He um Scott, he, yep. moved, he moved in with us his um, eighth grade year, mm -hmm. uh, right around. I mean, so he was there for part of the '95 year, um, and then '96 um, he was a freshman, and. Uh, he was. It, it was just fun to watch him wrestle. I actually got more excited during his matches than I than I did mine most of the time. It was fun to to live with him, go to school with him, uh, drag him to practice every day. Um, yeah, he um really smart kid and picked up on stuff really quick. So it was fun to wrestle with him. He was so undersized. He wrestled one nineteen most of the year, and then made the decision to bump up to one thirty because he skipped over my weight class. Yeah. So he was he was undersized. He just outsmarted a lot of people I mean, he was he was really really good about just sticking to a game plan and he knew what he was good at so he stuck to that and of course scott's review video is on the channel um we've done his as of this filming we're filming this in november of 23 we've done scott's a month or so ago maybe a little bit more than a month or so ago but we've been trying to get with you feels like for uh since we started the series because when we got the the initial a um, lot of uh, the videos, the tapes, if you will, from the archive that we found. We first thing I done went through, watched Bruce's video, some of the names of the past, Bruce Step. Then we got to the 95, 96, 97 years, and you popped up. And as soon as I watched your 96, 97 tapes, I messaged Chris Goss or uh, 
Josh Muncy, you're one of the Sheldon Clark uh, other guys. And I was like, best wrestler in Sheldon Clark history, Jeremy Rhodes, no question. There, there's no question that your your technique and I just, you know, love watching your matches and I'm glad that we're got you on the series today. And for those of you that aren't familiar, Sheldon Clark won the team state championship, 1994. They won the team state championship in 95. So back-to-back -back team titles. They have not, as of this filming, like I said, this is November of 2023, before the season starts. They have 19 state champions between Sheldon Clark and Martin County. Uh, you recount for two of those. Now, let's kind of talk about your Kentucky State Tournament run. In 1995, 119 pounds, you make it to the finals. You run into Josh Spencer of Woodford County. You were a sophomore, ended up with a record, I believe, of 42-2. and two. But Josh gets you with a 9-3 to three decision. So, as a sophomore in the finals, probably not the result that you were hoping for, but the co consolation prize was you were in the finals and you helped Martin County, Sheldon Clark, win a team state championship. Actually, I know I had at least three losses that year because I lost to Spencer in the regional finals. I beat, I beat him at state duels, major decision him. Um, and then at regional finals, he, he caught me uh, in a cradle, held me the whole third period on my, in my, on my back, ended up losing by a point. Um, I lost to um, – then lost to him at the state tournament, and I lost to uh, Joe Carr in a match earlier that year. I uh, lost to him in overtime. Um, okay. But earlier that year. And so all, all three of my losses in Kentucky came from Woodford County. You got you to gotta respect them. Oh, yeah, Woodford County, man. Uh, the way that it fell in 93, Woodford County wins the team title. 94 and 95, Sheldon Clark comes on the scene, and then from – like 96, 97, 99, 2000, Woodford County, man, they're the show. You know what I'm saying? They had, they had some great wrestlers. But, and to uh, the uh, the record being inaccurate, um, we didn't have the ability of track or flow wrestling to keep up with everybody's uh, record. So sometimes uh, a match or two may have got missed here, but I think that's what the video has. Or the during the face-off of 95, I think it says, uh, your record was 40. That's where I got that number from. So if it was wrong, it was. Well, uh, I lost the match. So it would have been 40, you know, probably 42 and two, but then I lost. Oh, okay. Five. All right. 42 and three. So yeah. we can, we can believe that number. though to your junior year 1996 the we didn't have you know these things social media didn't exist the message boards really didn't exist but everybody knew who jeremy rhodes was anybody in kentucky wrestling if you ask them that were around the sport then everybody kind of knew you were either going to go 125 or 130 and that was going to be whichever weight class you went, that was probably going to be the weight class that you ended up winning because everybody kind of knew it was going to be your year. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, and I think I was part of the, the jumble around with the, um, the, um, we didn't know where Scott was going to go in a weight class because mm -hmm. I was debating on bumping up to 130. Um, actually Adam Northcutt, who Scott wrestled in the finals was at 125 uh, or 119 the previous year I wrestled him, I think in districts or regional finals. 
And then um, he was at 125 most of the year, bumped up to get out of my weight class. And then Scott bumped up from 119 and ended up wrestling him in districts, uh, regionals, and then state finals. So yeah. it was uh, – and uh, there was a lot of debate and a lot of uh, people asking throughout the year what weight class I was going to end up going. Um, and 125 was it wasn't a hard cut for me. I pretty much weighed about 130 most of the year, so it wasn't a problem. And if we know anything about uh, the Jim Matney style of uh, holding stuff close to the vest – I mean, that that probably was kept a, the biggest secret in the world of where you guys were going to go, just knowing, uh, you know, knowing his style. Yeah, I don't think there was um, – we really didn't get too much into it until right at the end of the year. Scott was having a hard time cutting down to 119. Okay. Uh, he was growing. I mean, he was a freshman in high school. He was growing, and he was having a hard time making 119. So it was just the debate of whether I was, we were both going to move up or whether he'd leapfrog my weight class and go up and that, that's what we ended up choosing at the end of the year no that's that's cool so let's go over your 96 bracket you start off the of course 1995 the state tournament was held at atherton's gym in louisville 1996 we move it to the dungeon there in frankfurt it's a complete just different tournament environment the lights everything it's an arena you guys uh, stayed there in that I believe you guys stayed there in that big uh, hotel tower there off to the side of the uh, or attached I should say to the uh, to the convention center so it was you know it was it was a show it was a big time production there it was set up nice there there was um, it was a little small for a lot of the preliminary rounds but for the mm -hmm. finals perfect you couldn't you couldn't ask for a better place it literally felt like the stands were on like the people were sitting right on top of you the spotlight it was um you know, I've, I've, I've been at other states for, uh, for state tournaments, stuff like that. That was probably the best atmosphere um, for a state tournament that I've seen. And I'm, I'm so glad that you said that because I say the exact same thing in every video we do at the dungeon of just how awesome it was and just how you knew this was a big event. This wasn't just another tournament. This wasn't just another match. You knew you were wrestling in the state championship and you were under the lights. You just knew it. Yes. All right. So you start off, you wrestle Matt Downey from Valley out of Louisville. You win that by a pin. You get to the quarters, you're wrestling David Diaz from Hopkinsville. You win that by a 14 to 1 decision. And Diaz goes on to get sixth place. You get to the semis, you're wrestling Jamie. I'm I know I'm not going to pronounce this last name correctly. Master. Master Trulino from Campbell County. I probably butchered his name. I'm sorry if you watch this, but I, I just cannot pronounce it. It's an Italian sounding name. I'm sorry. You win that by a five to one decision. So you get to the finals. You're wrestling Mike Bodner from St. Xavier. Now we're not going to tell you the score. Had you wrestled Mike before? No, I'd never wrestled him before. I got you. And you know, it should be noted, uh, rest in peace to Coach Matney. Um, his, in 2015, it was one of the state playoff games. Um, one of the news, local news stations goes into the locker room, and he gives that epic um, speech that's been immortalized all over the place here in eastern part of Kentucky. Uh, he, he ends it uh, with, before right before the team goes out on the field, don't you let anybody – come in here, especially from a big city, be able to walk out of here thinking that there are better people than you are. And we've heard the stories from the Sheldon Clark football players, the football, Sheldon Clark wrestlers, Johnson Central football players, Johnson Central wrestlers. Is that was something that he, about every practice, every meet, you know, is just because they're from a big city, just because we're from the small town of Inez, we're from the small town of Paintsville, don't you let them think they're better than you. Don't you let them believe that they are better people than you just because you're from a big city and we're from the mountains. I have to imagine at some point when you know you're wrestling a Louisville kid from that goes to a you know a private school there at St. Xavier, he has to give you some type of Jeremy, don't you let anybody, especially from St. Xavier, be able to walk out of here thinking that they're better people than you are. Am I pretty close on that? Actually, me and me and coach, it was different. I wasn't one of those raw, raw, get up. You know, you had to, had to get me fired up. 
I just, it was really kind of same thing with football, played, played football for him. I got to hear those speeches and they were, they were great. I mean, he, he could motivate teams to do stuff that they shouldn't be able to do. He'd get more out of people than what, what they knew they could do. Yep. Um, his relationship, wrestling, football, we talked. I mean, he, if for him to get excited during a match, one of my matches was, was rare. He normally, he might get upset with an official, but it was just basically go out and take care of business. It was, it was, we, it was more dry. He, he, coach Matney was great because he knew how to coach different types of people, but it was fun, fun with those football speeches. Cause I would sometimes pick on him about him afterwards, you yeah. know, cause sometimes they weren't as epic as the, uh, the one at Johnson central that everyone got to see. That was, I got to hear those on a regular basis. Um, and it, it may not, it may not even been football. It could have been something in school. It could have been wrestling. It could have been, it didn't matter what sport it was, what event it was. He knew how to motivate people. He knew how to get the best out of them. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's a good way to go ahead and pull up your match video here. We have, of course, the match video. We're here at the dungeon in Frankfurt. And like I said, the lights are off or the, the spotlight is on, I should say. The, um, the face-off, we have the face-off. The match, and I believe this also has the uh, the medal ceremony. So, Jeremy, ma'am, let's go. You come trotting out. I get a kick out of the record because I really don't have a clue what my record was that year. We I wrestled so many exhibition matches. It was always just kind of guess. Uh, whenever you go to finals, if they wanted to know what your record was, we just kind of guessed. I, I didn't, exhibition matches didn't count, so we, I never knew what my record actually was. Right. And when I was cutting this down getting it ready, I, I was really happy to see you got a red singlet. He's got a green because being a referee, it's so much easier to look at the singlet and, you know, have the right colors on your, on your wrist. So what was your, like, bread and butter go-to take down here from neutral? I, I was I was actually um, pretty much straight either a sweep or a, a straight high crotch. I wasn't tremendous on my feet in high school. Um, I um, got a lot better on my feet later in college, but he slowed me down really well. His hands were were really strong. I, I was shocked with how strong he was. His grip was amazing. He kept holding my hands and my wrist a lot in the, uh, during this match, and it really slowed me down. Mm -hmm. And after after being in the finals the year before, the um, I kind of had a plan of going in. The year before, I, I, could, I went out and took down Spencer. and had no had no issues with him on our feet, scrambling as well. So I tried to avoid the big scramble situations. I tried to avoid those big move situations and just stay in good position. And, yeah. Uh, and, of course, having all the videos that we've been able to obtain over the years, the about 96 97 you said the word scramble you can really start to see other teams start learning how to scramble before it was let's try to move right get it let's go back oh two red takedown two I, I remember how i took him down because it was like i always called it like a seat belt or like a little back trip type thing cut back uh, that was my um uh, it was just it was easy after a shot, you know, you could slide up and they'd whizzer you, you just slide all the way under their hips and you could kind of kind of take them back. And we go out of bounds. So on on top at this point in your wrestling career, were you uh what a, a bar, a wing guy looking for a half, a cradle, just whatever was there? Tight waist. I got you. Tight waist and shoulder press. Uh I guess he took down because the, the video doesn't show it. I'm, I'm sorry, but I, we're going to imagine he took down. Or did you take top? Do you remember? I, I I'm pretty certain I deferred to him and he took down. Okay, that's kind of what I was guessing. All right, so we're out of bounds, and you can see right there you're trying to like for like a one-on-one, -on -one, point an arm across. And you can see keep grabbing my fingers. I broke my. Broke my hand and fingers uh, during football season, and then rebroke. Oh yeah, it. I see that. 
first week of practice and wrestling, and I that bothered me all year. My left my left hand grip wise just wasn't. Yep, the same. right there. He just he done it again right there, and you you pulled your hand away, which was I mean smart on his part. You know, I hate to say that, but yeah. You're trying for like a head lever there. Yeah, I wouldn't mainly just flatten him out. I wouldn't actually run the head lever until he flattened out. And he just got hit for stalling for for not no motion on the bottom, which I good call. I I thought it was a bad call. He was trying to come up. I was just sitting there. Um they, they hit him they hit him again later, I think, or uh, and it it shocks me that when they hit him for stalling because I was really just holding him down. He would try to come up and I would I would jump out to the side, bury my shoulder, and hang on. Yeah. And, uh, um, so, out, we're out of bounds. Get set. Crystal tries a Granby and get caught in like a split the middle situation. They called uh they called him for a legal hold here because he scissored and then actually slid up to like a figure four. It was more it, it was more inadvertent than anything. I, I disagreed with the call myself. I, I yeah that he was wasn't, wasn't trying to hit it. It just happened to fall that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when, whenever I was getting this ready, I, I saw that and I was like, ooh, I don't know about that one. I ooh. Yeah, sometimes was, you gotta let things burn a little bit, you know. It was it was unintentional and it wasn't it didn't affect anything. It'd been different if scissored the head and, and tried to use it somehow, but yeah. just the um, so he, he turns in right there, but I guess the referee said he was out of bounds. I remember right he gets an go escape. Ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, he gets an escape at some point in this period, but I can't I, I, I can't remember when. Running, running. There it is. No, nothing, nothing, nothing. All right. So he gets his one. And that was smart on your part, realizing that he was already, like, he was out. And just to kind of focus your defense on getting, you know, getting like an underhook or overhook or whatever you was going to try to do there instead of just trying to hold him down. All right, end of the period, you're up three to one. You take down. And right out of the gate, you get your escape. So four to one. Like right there, you can see he's got just got a, like a death grip on my wrist. I couldn't get yeah. away from his hands the whole match. Made it difficult to shoot. That was that was the curtain. I can I can imagine. Um, do you like peek up at the clock and see? Okay, there was X amount of time. I'm up. You know, a few points. Let's just not do anything crazy or. I, I, I just about every match I normally make it a point to know about what time is left, but I didn't. I don't remember actually looking at the clock. Okay, um, no, that's all right. We're out of bounds. Out of bounds. I, I threw up by three, so I wasn't going to do anything crazy at this point. I wasn't. The shots I'm taking are half shots. They're not. I'm not committing to anything really. I'm not giving him a chance to avoid. Uh, I'm basically avoiding that scramble situation or that big, that big move that he needs. Uh, yeah. I take hurt me. Uh, I take down to my back does. There it is. He's trying for like a like a whip right there. Uh, he tries to throw me here in a minute if I remember right because it, it's short time left. Um, you know I could. I'm just staying out front. I know a throw is going to come at some point. Whenever my head pops up. He's, it's his only option to try to win the match. He's got to have something big. Yeah. So I, my head eventually pops back up. I know a throw's coming. There it is. You get two right there as time expires just about. 
And I think the match ends with me just dragging my toes, keeping them in. You hear the crowd counting it down. And there it is. Good show of sportsmanship helping him up there. Shake the coach's hand. That's where this one ends. So uh, good performance, good solid performance. I mean, good fundamental wrestling right there. Nothing, uh, nothing too flashy, but you done what you had to do to get the win. I mean, and you played to your strengths. Like and like I said, didn't really make a whole lot of mistakes. None actually. The the year the year before, I think I should have won. But if I'd have had the strategy I had my my junior year, go out, wrestle smart match, avoid the scrambles, avoid the big the big moves, you know, I, I may not lose that match. So you you learn you learn from your mistakes. And uh, like, like you said, not a flashy match. I, I refer to it as like watching paint dry. I wasn't going to give up that big move. I was just going to go out, stay in good position. I think I could have beat him by more, but I could have also very easily gone out there and tried to force something mm -hmm. and got that got caught somehow. Um, sometimes you got to, you got to know when to slow it down and just do what you're good at. That's it, exact. That's, I think that's a, uh, for the 96 video, I think that's a great place to, uh, to end this one. So like we said earlier, you're a two-time state champion, 1997 as well. So, guys, we're going to stop the 1996 video here. We'll see you guys in 1997.